and welcome into Clackner Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's Women's College Soccer on ACC Network Extra, number six Virginia against a hungry Hofstra pride in a hot afternoon in the Old South. I'm Zeeland Shannon to take you through the action. These are two teams that have had success early in the season. Hofstra rock, rocking the traditional blue today, Virginia in those home whites you see on your screen. Hofstra barely pulled off a win earlier in the season, two games ago against Boston University, scoring a goal with just 20 seconds left in regulation. Madeleine Anderson was the player that put it in, and Lucy Porter won it in double overtime. Virginia knows about heart-stopping wins as well, coming out and beating Bucknell with a 90th minute goal, even though Bucknell was unable to muster a shot in the entire contest. And then because of that Bucknell match, strangely enough, at an early point in the season, in a matchup between two teams that have only played each other two other times, we actually do have a common opponent as Hofstra comes in 3-1 and one with wins over Bucknell. That went over Boston University. And they went to Fordham and won comfortably 3-1 in New York in their last matchup on the 30th this Thursday. Well, Virginia, like I said, has also played Bucknell, and they also won one to nothing. So even though Virginia's number six in the country and Hofstra right now is unranked, they put together the same result against the Bucknell Bison, which is something for Hofstra to hang its hat on as it comes into this matchup. The other wins for Virginia in a 4-0 start to the season against Colgate, Cincinnati, and William and Mary. The wins over Cincinnati and William and Mary were both three goals a pop. William and Mary, of course, in the Colonial Athletic Association, which Hofstra shares, but Hofstra were the big bad team in the CAA last season. They went perfect, 11-0 through conference play, Hofstra. So this is not a team to mess around with and a significant test for Virginia Cavaliers team that struggled to score against Bucknell last Sunday. Virginia does have the most goals in women's college soccer in the last seven years, though. So this is an offense that can figure it out and figure it out in a hurry. To get you the starting lineups for these two teams, first for Hofstra in goal will be Ashley Wilson, then numerically through the rest of it, Madeline Anderson, Bella Richards, Lucy Shepard, Jordan Littleboy, Sabrina Bryan, Lucy Porter, Jen Bunicor, Chelsea Stiegman, Kelly Gerdes, and Monique Ianella. For Virginia, it's Laurel Ivory in goal, freshly returned from her United States appearances at the U-20 World Cup, where the United States was knocked out in the group stage. Followed by Betsy Brandon, Hannah Kerner, Courtney Peterson, Taryn Torres, Zoe Morse, Phoebe McLernan, Sydney Zandi, Montana Sutton, Megan McCool, and the freshman Alexa Spanstra. Virginia has used a whole pile of different starting lineups, while Hofstra has remained largely consistent at 10 of the 11 positions, with only Monique Ianella having not started every match. Ashley Wilson has appeared in every match, but has not made a start in goal this season. She is one of two redshirt senior options that Hofstra brings to bear in goal, and we very well might see the other one Jenna Borison before it is all said and done. Hofstra coming out preliminary in a 4-4-2, and it looks as though Virginia is going with a 3-4-3. Obviously, we'll see how those formations will take shape in the early phases of this contest. Two 45-minute halves. We remain tied at the end of regulation. We will play two extra time periods. We're tied after that. And a tie holds in women's college soccer. Can expect Virginia and all of its technical quality to be more ball dominant in this contest as McLernan navigates her way by the first line of defense. Gertis cuts off the long pass, but uncomfortably. And now it's shipped back upfield by the Pride and Corral back to where it started with McLernan. It's a dangerous pass has picked out Montana Sutton, but she's pursued by Porter. Forces the ball to the far side of the field, and Hofstra's defensive discipline shining through in the opening minute. Temperature well above 90 today in central Virginia. When you're out in the sun, searching long ball, chested to the side by McCool. Gerdes is there. Shovels it up the sideline. A brilliant one-two that's left a bit far in front of Lucy Shepard. Bella Richards had the right idea. And already we see time called. Just a bit of sorting out required. Head referee 
is Nick Rod Fate. The assistants, William Ayton, Anthony Tribati, and Esley Leon. Bill Bunting is the scorer. Virginia has not played in seven days, so the legs should be fresher. It was last Sunday that they beat Bucknell. Thursday was the win in New York against Fairfield for Hofstra. So the beginning of the weekend and the end of it for the Pride. First real probing move forward as Kerner goes inside out, has it on her right foot by one, by two, flicks it into the corner, an opportunity to provide something of a service, but it's behind everyone, settled by Spanstra. The shot stifled by Richards, but still looking for clearance, Hofstra. And it's not coming. Peterson, service for McCool, spins off the outside of her foot. Taryn Torres trying to round a move on the ball, but it's escaped for a goal kick. Some last-ditch defending from Hofstra, but it held firm. Bella Richards had the crucial block after Spanstra had opened up some space. There was trouble on the left side of the defense for Hofstra, and it looked far too easy for Kerner and Torres to pick their way open. Hofstra looking to play it short. Wilson to Gerdes. Rolled to space. Stiegman could do very little with that ball, but give it away to Peterson. Virginia looking to tighten the screws and keep the ball in the opposition half now. After some early confidence boosting for Hofstra in that opening minute or two, the Pride have been backed in. Trying to change levels with that delivery, but the defense is wise to it. Cut out by Madeline Anderson. McLernan. Loose touch, but she has it under control. McLernan charging. Fate with the call. And an obvious foul on Bello Richards, who came right through the body of McLernan. Hofstra is going to need to play a physical game. Need to stay disciplined. Clog the obvious passing lanes. Has to force Virginia to try and beat them. And then get the ball to playmakers like Jen Bunicor to try and have a chance to counter. Kerner by one, trying to take on a second. Kerner floats a ball harmlessly over the frame. Had the right idea, but was forced wide all the way. It'll be Ashley Wilson, the fifth year senior out of Glen Clove, yeah. New York. Yeah, yeah, you can Vast majority of this Hofstra team is either from England or New York State. Very little in between. Bella Richards from Auckland, New Zealand. And that just about covers it. Ball flicked into the corner by Torres. First touch by Spanstra, and she's open space inside on Gertis. Laid to the top of the box. Peterson, and it's popped off the line. Richards rounds a move on the ball and gets it clear, and Hofstra now has an opportunity to counter. Charging ahead is Sabrina Bryan, and she has played it into space for Buncor, but Buncor has been dispossessed by Zoe Morse. That's who Hofstra wants. Jin Buncor, senior forward, is a big target up top. She's 5'11", a physical presence that can challenge slighter Virginia central defenders like McKernan, or McLernan and Morse. <laughs> but neither lacks for toughness. McLernan she doesn't like for a move forward either. She's set Spanstra up quite well, but Spanstra looking to cut in on the right foot. Now slips it through from McCool. McCool deflected across. McCool settles on her right foot, shoots, and it's popped over the top by Wilson, the first save in the match. And it was quality as McCool trying to put it into the top shelf. First corner kick of the match comes in the sixth minute. Virginia sends over Betsy Brandon for an in-swinger and has bunched its team up at the top of the box just out of your screen. Brandon, low-driven ball into a crowd, battled away by Madeline Anderson, but Virginia comes away with possession. It was Torres tracking back Kerner in the center of the park, not a comfortable position for her. Left it out wide, then comes through the middle. Anderson boots it clear, settled by Kerner. She lost it for a second. That gave Brian some hope. Not enough. Peterson 
on for Sutton, who got clobbered, and there's going to be a foul. As Sutton tried to pick out an outside of the right foot pass to the wing, looking for Spanstrup. Bella Richards, the Kiwi, has not been afraid to leave a foot in and has slowed Virginia's attack as a result. Courtney Peterson, she's wide open on this left wing. We'll see if Hofstra picks it up. Now Gerda's coming over. But only so much. Sutton has options here. Lucy Shepard's been back to the line. Sutton looking for a ball into the box. Flicked on. And a haphazard clearance for Hofstra. Punched back into the box by Peterson and cleared away again. And this looks like it's going to be the vast majority of the match as Hofstra just trying to deny Virginia at the last. Spanstra, look at that pace. She gets inside the defender and is closed off again by Madeline Anderson, who seems to be everywhere, the left center back for Hofstra. But Spanstra, the freshman, has been an absolute nuisance. Ball in from Sutton. It's a searching one. Torres trying to track it down, and she has. Isolated on the far side of the area. Torres, the left-footed ball in, hoping someone's there. Stegman knocks it down, and Wilson will scoop it up. Stegman, who has struggled handling Spanstra at times already, kept up with her there. It was more of a hopeful ball into the box that time for Virginia. Instead of actually picking a target, Peterson... Working in tight spaces, and Virginia has it back to Zoe Morse. Morse, a player over her career who started in the midfield and has shifted backwards to holding midfield. Oh, turnover. McLernan has given it away and then comes back and puts a challenge on Lucy Porter as she tries to get the shot off. Expected a call there, but none came. And McLernan bailing herself out. Porter with some excellent anticipation to find the ball, and then she tried to catch Laurel Ivory off her line. Would have been a very challenging task, even if McLernan hadn't shown up right at her boots at the right time. McLernan shown that propensity to foray forward from her defensive position. But this time gives way to Morse. Morse has picked out a beautiful ball, and it looks like Spanstra is going to get to it, but McCool gave initial pursuit, and she was flagged for offsides. Virginia's left side of the attack with McCool and Spanstrip been all over Hofstra. And after an early push with the right, it seems as though the left is going to be where Virginia's going to make the money today. Wilson will come up off her line to try and put Hofstra in a more advanced position. Looking for Bunicor, who has flicked it on. They've worked it to Porter. She touches it down, slips a ball into the box. Kerner, the last defender there for Virginia, gets it just in time or else it would find Bella Richards, who'd made the move all the way forward. That's the first time Hofstra's really been able to put a threat on the Virginia goal, and it comes in the 11th minute. Taryn Torres, a lot of fluidity in this Virginia system as she comes into the middle. Now it's Spanstra charging on her right foot, cuts it back. McCool has options in the box, but the ball blocked away by Anderson right back to McCool. Off to Torres, brings it to her left foot, looking for a ball in. Wilson is there. A shot cross headed to the back corner, and Ashley Wilson was ready. Four shots, two on goal for the Cavaliers. Wilson saving both of them as we are scoreless in the opening 11 minutes. Another flick on header. Zoe Morse reacting to it first. Had Lucy Porter hot on her heels. Porter has been lively in pursuit of Punicor's flick ons. Laurel Ivory trying to call off her defensive help, but McLaren says, hey, I have this. Virginia walking it forward, and Hofstra letting him have the possession for now. Ball ahead for Peterson, takes a loose touch. Gertis gets to it, tries to clear it down the line. It took a deflection, so Spanstra is able to collect, still in the offensive third. Sutton 
Isolation out on the wing. Here's a run forward from Hannah Kerner. And it really had opened up some space, but Bryan was able to react. Now a ball through. McCool, McCool to her left foot. Shoots! Saved by Wilson into the post. And no one's home on the backside for Virginia. So Wilson saves the day. A tremendous individual effort from McCool. It's working one on three, and she found a hole to get a shot off. Wilson just did enough. She'd probably tell you she could have done a little more with it. But the post is a goalkeeper's best friend. Wilson, part of a goalkeeper rotation that Hofstra uses. She worked as the second half goalkeeper all of last year where Hofstra just switches keeps at halftime. This year, Jenna Borison, who's the other part of that equation, the ball ahead that Zoe Moore seems to have a beat on. Bunicor unable to put too much pressure on her, but Zoe Morris lurking on the ball for a second. Borison, like I said, started every match, but neither goalkeeper will play the whole match. So we could very well see Borison later today. But right now it's Ashley Wilson, and she's given a fair account of herself. McLernan. Probing run, goes outside. Brian got a touch, but not enough of one to keep it away from Kerner. Then Brian, an excellent left-footed tackle, but Kerner with that speed is back onto it again. Into Taryn Torres. Sutton, a lot of numbers forward in white jerseys. Brandon dwelling on the ball for just a bit too long. And Hofstra able to close all the angles. Shepard gets it clear. Now Morse. A probing drive forward. Either McLernan or Morse trying to get ahead every time to add the extra number to attack. Soft first touch from Torres into a dangerous area. Lofts it over the top for Spanstra, and it's over the bar. A beautiful exchange. Taryn Torres for the freshman Spanstra. And she had the right idea to tuck it far post, but got under it a bit too much. The technique was there. To take that first time, bouncing from just behind your right shoulder. As we enter the 15th minute of play, still scoreless, Virginia and Hofstra. Wilson's ball, a challenging one for the pride to control. And once again, almost lost. Porter had a chance to control that in a crowd, but instead it's fished away by Brandon, and now a ball to the corner for Spanstra. McCool waited it well enough. Spanstra brings it to her favorite right foot. It's run right around. Spiegman shot blocked by her own player. Betsy Brandon got in the way. Wasn't wise to the plan. And Wilson probably would have saved it anyways. Now has a goal kick. I can, I can hear you, Spanstra's explosiveness. It cannot be overstated, the 5-5 freshman out of Brighton, Michigan. She was the seventh overall player nationally, according to Top Drawer Soccer, and a two-time All-American. She was on the 2016 U-17 Women's World Cup team, Spanstra. She has been a big name in the women's soccer world for quite some time, and now has a chance to show it on the college stage. Torres spins it to her left foot. It's going to have a go, Wilson. Steady as she goes, right behind the ball, secures it again. But she's starting to pad those save stats, has four now. Seven shots for Virginia in the opening 15 and a half minutes. It's not a healthy long-term plan for Hofstra, but you take a look at the scoreboard, and we're still tied at nothing. Oh, it's a poor touch from Lucy Shepard. Gone right out of play, and Virginia back on the attack. Spanstra back to the lefty winger, Peterson. McLernan, Virginia with very little concern for its own defensive safety. Oftentimes in this match, leaving really only one player back, either Morse or McLernan with the other rampaging forward like this. McLernan opens up a lot of space for Spanstra. Now against Gerdes. Spanstra trying to touch it by her, but Gerdes plays it well and then clears it out for a throw. No, it's spun back in. Peterson. Drags it to the insides, picked out Montana Sutton, who's more of a deep-lying playmaker for this team. Betsy Brandon will play alongside her. 
Players like Zandi and Tara Torres a little farther up the field. Kerner from a wide position, swings it. Easy one for Wilson. Was looking for McCool, but McCool wasn't near post enough. Kerner didn't quite get her foot all the way around the ball. Better boot by Wilson this time. She's hooked a couple straight up into the air. But it still settles at the foot of McLernan. The possession stats skewed significantly in favor of Virginia, you'd think, in these opening 17 minutes. But still scoreless. McLernan mistimed. Easy one for Wilson, who's going to touch this down. And a little room to breathe for Hofstra. Gertis and Anderson in the middle of defense, just playing a little keep away. Virginia will have to come forward a bit to try and break up this party. Or eventually Hofstra will go for something. Little boy flashing in defensive midfield to provide an extra player for a touch for Hofstra, but very quickly that idea is spoiled by McCool, who's gotten in front of little boy. Virginia slowly easing forward. Hofstra almost daring them to come, and that's a mistake. Oh, there's a chance for McCool. Touches by Wilson. Can she get into the box? Down goes McCool. Wilson fouled her. We have a penalty kick. You could feel it coming, and the mistake was made. And now a dire moment for the Hofstra pride. McCool timed her entrance into the play very well. Remained patient, didn't just hoof it into the box when she knew the goal was open. She cut back once, cut back twice, and was dragged down by Wilson, who was faced with very few other options. Perhaps fortunate to not be given any sort of card on that play. Taryn Torres will take this penalty kick. The fifth-year senior, Wilson, in goal. Torres, and it's in the back of the net. Taryn Torres has opened her account. 18 minutes in, Virginia one, Hofstra nothing. Sent the keeper the other way and rippled the side netting. It's such an intricate science, the penalty kick. But Taryn Torres was cool as a cucumber. Her second goal of the season in her third game. And that's a tough one for Hofstra because it was largely of their own doing. A mistake, knocking it around the back, getting too comfortable for one too many seconds. And where Virginia had been stifled in large part, trying to create clear opportunities. They were handed one instead. McCool juked herself off the ball. Anderson kept the balance to play it wide for Bryan. Kerner defending as dispossessed her quite quickly. Into the middle for Brandon. Just gets it in front of Porter. Sharp side to side movement. Spanstra completely misplayed it. And it is shoveled out of play. Hofstra making a change after that goal. Lily Stavisky has come in on the right side of defense. And we do have a player down in the middle of the park in Bella Richards, the sophomore, been very physical defender thus far, but she will be subbed out for Megan Fisher. Again, unlimited substitutions in women's college soccer. We will see another change, try and keep those legs fresh. Bring off Lucy Shepard and bring in Aliyah Mensel. That's three changes now for Hofstra as the heat along with the lack of possession starting to drain the energy a bit for the Hofstra pride. Some wise changes. It's not the easiest game for Simon Ridioff, a coach for Hofstra. I have to manage his players very well in order to give them a chance to get back into this. But one of the oldest adages in soccer is that any team can score one goal. And Hofstra is certainly better than any team. A very capable CAA opponent for this Virginia Cavaliers team that's sixth in the country. Now obviously, Virginia is going to have technical superiority. 
But Hofstra beat Bucknell by just as much as Virginia did already this year. Both teams are the one nothing win over the Bison. That tells you that the Pride are certainly capable of pulling a goal back in this match. Spanstra, with that in mind, roaming through the middle for Torres. Back in the middle to Spanstrip. Savisky trying to leave a foot in, but Spanstra's picked her way all the way through. She wanted McCool to make a run, but the run was not there. It was a hopeful pass for Alexis Spanstra. The two high-five it out. Wilson makes McCool come up, force her to pick the ball up, give her team a bit of a breather. Ball flicked on by Porter and then ramped out of play by Peterson. Hofstra trying to play a direct type of game going forward, get it up to their bigger forward players and nod it around, see if you can find a run that sneaks in behind in a lapse of concentration. Porter on to Bunicor, trying to give it back to Porter. Betsy Brandon had to be brave. She didn't make contact, and now it's spun itself into the middle. Montana Sutton first to react, but Megan Fisher was close by. A rare touch for the Virginia goalkeeper, Laurel Ivory. It'll be a long, lonely day up top for Bunicor as the life of a target player. Little boy back to Gerdes. Can't quite lift it over the Virginia midfield. Zandy. Gone back for Zoe Morse. Shuffles it to McLernan. McLernan. It's just a bit too easy for Phoebe McLernan to find herself in those open channels. Moving forward. Now Spanstra running onto the ball. Shoots. It's knocked down 19 yards out. It would have been a free kick if it was a handball, but none given by Fateh, the referee. Collected by Wilson, and on we play. 22 minutes down, one nothing, Virginia. McCool trying to launch her pressure, and she's taken it away from Anderson. Excellent defensive ability from the Virginia forward. The ball ahead has been bodied away. Ianella wearing the 22 today on the left side of the defense. After some early struggles, she has been very responsible in her duties. Morris right through the midfield again. That's the main problem for Hofstra. And then they're down a few players. McCool. And it's a shot out of the right foot by Spanstra again. That's her strong side. When you're defending her, you have to know that Alexis Spanstra is going to try and drag to her right foot and have it go or lay it off. The all inside forward move. She has been one of the most threatening players for this offense today. Gerdes, a composed play, nods it back for Wilson. Wilson will pick it up so McCool can take a quick breather instead of having to pursue her once more. Betsy Brandon first to the header. Spanstra touches it down and Virginia in control. Cavaliers, with the exception of one or two moments, this perhaps a third, but Laurel Ivory's there to clean things up. Cavaliers have been in control of every stage of the match. Zoe Morse, sharp ball for Betsy Brandon. On to McLernan, and Hofstra's run out of forward players to contest, so McLernan can move forward and has a perfect ball down the wing. That's too far for Peterson. That was there. Virginia from the right side to the left. Open things quite wonderfully, and the Cavaliers are sizing up a few substitutions of their own. And a water break in general has been called. Virginia, one, Hofstra, nothing as the clock stops at 2047 o'clock New Stadium. We'll be right back with more on ACC Network Extra.
out of that heat-mandated water break. We're back on ACC Network Extra. Zeeland Shannon with you for Virginia and Hofstra in women's collegiate soccer. Hofstra rocking the blue, Virginia in the home whites, and the home whites have the lead. 1-0 and a penalty kick goal from Taryn Torres. The foul coming from the goalkeeper, Wilson, as she took down McCool after having come off her line, participating in a bit of passing play that went awry. It's been all Virginia, 10 shots to none for Hofstra. And we saw this from Virginia against Bucknell last Sunday. Virginia not only posted its third shutout in four matches to start the season, but went one better. Bucknell did not have a shot for the whole match. It was the first time Virginia had held an opponent to no shots since 2016. Of course, we're only through 25 minutes in the 26th minute of play. But Hofstra on its way to the same bit of ignominy. Peterson right there to spoil Brian's attempt to get by her, and Hofstra will be backed in. Through ball, cut out by Gerdes, who has been very well positioned but struggled with her distribution. And the through ball looking for Brian, but Jolly on the spot, one of those Virginia changes. Brianna Westrup. Westrup, the player that scored the 90th minute goal against Bucknell, but Virginia's really been rotating the starting lineup. We've seen a different one for every match this season. And 25 of the 26 rostered players have touched the field already. Excellent first-time layoff by Zandi. Now it's worked its way to the near side. Spanstra slips it through. Crafty ball looking for Brandon, but Brandon didn't see it coming. Spanstra is still battling out there to try and make things happen, but not quite on the same page yet. You have to remember... She has only just joined the collegiate ranks. This is her fourth game, fifth game rather. Pressure on Wilson, she barely is able to get it away. Hofstra showing a bit of possession here, but Brian bumped off by Spanstrup. In for Brandon. The changes for Virginia were Westrup, Rebecca Jarrett, and Alyssa Gorzak. So both teams have now gone to the bench for three. Hofstra's actually gone to the bench for a fourth. Made during that water break as well, trying to cope with this heat that is really ripping through both teams. Siebel Lazney. The fourth player that's joined Hofstra since the starting lineup. Stavisky throw in, slip to the side. Brian can't get there. Sutton leaves it for Spanstra. Hofstra has tightened it up a bit, not letting Virginia get into as many threatening positions as it managed to in the first 10, 15 minutes. Headed into the 29th minute with Virginia up 1-0. The next step for Hofstra is being able to throw a counter punch or two. Bunicor has been woefully uninvolved, but that's a brilliant bit of takeaway from Stavisky, and there's Bunicor. Porter, Brian is looking for Bunicor. It's a testing ball that Bianca Westrup will lumber her way to. Laurel Ivory relieves the pressure with a crafty layoff back to Westrup. Ivory, not a player that you are afraid of passing the ball to, despite the fact she's wearing the gloves. As goalkeepers evolve to be more and more adept with the feet. Sutton with the long ball. It was good, but the flag's gone up. Offsides. Alyssa Gorzak saw the opening, but she was a step too far by Monique Ianella. Oh, 
Hofstra has done a nice job of keeping its line together. None of the long balls for Virginia have figured their way out. All taken away by Jarrett. Wilson still off her line. Jarrett can walk it in from here. A goal for the freshman. Oh, horror for Hofstra. And a huge moment for Rebecca Jarrett. In her fourth collegiate match, she has her second goal. And once again, it's a passing issue at the back that undoes the pride. Well, Jarrett took a couple of extra touches just to make sure, but she really didn't need to, could have just passed it in the moment she got to the ball. And yeah, Virginia has gone to the bench for a few more changes after the goal. Get those to you in just a moment as Jarrett finds herself back in the ball. Turns on Gertis, and there is an acre of space for Gorzak on the near side. Gorzak flicks it in. Savisky is there. Anticipated the cross well, then Brian trying to go down the line and slam shut by Peterson. But it's Hofstra ball. There will be a twinge of regret about this first half for Hofstra with Virginia, all of the ball and all the pressure. But the two goals the Cavaliers have mustered coming straight off Hofstra mistakes. And Bunicor is going to get a breather. The star player up top for Hofstra heads to the bench. Agostinello has come in in her place to try and add some energy up top to make some runs to try and find some openings. Ashlyn Sarepka, Anna Sumter, and Claire Constant have joined the contest for Virginia. And the Cavaliers threatening again on the edge of the area. Wilson bravely off her line. And she spoiled the attack. Mensel was there defensively. And Wilson was the one that made the crucial play. So those fresh legs for Virginia is Sharepka found a step and a half against her defender. And Sarepka there again took it right to the stomach. Gone out of play. Not only is this Virginia team obviously very talented, number six in the country, some fairly dominant performances at the early stage of the season. Even that late win against Bucknell, the Bison had not mustered a shot. The ability to go deep into the bench and still come out with quality. 25 of 26 players that have played already this year. Keep those legs fresh for the last 10, 15 minutes of a half. Out wide. Oh, it's kept in with great skill. But Anderson's across to play it out. Zandi did a fantastic job of fishing that one out of the air. Wasn't the sharpest ball from Sumter, but it was the right idea to open up space. Madeline Anderson's been a bright spot in the middle of defense. She's the one that made that play to stymie it. Zandi on a run through the middle. It's just put away by Anderson again. Seemed far too easy as Zandi cut in to the edge of the six yard box. And Madeline Anderson very comfortable and composed every time she's putting a foot into a challenge. Who will take this kick? Ayana Du. Virginia's made even more changes just before the kick. Saraki and Sargent have joined the fray. It's virtually the whole starting lineup now getting a breather. It's the same strategy from the first corner. Bunched up the top of the box. Adu now with an outswinging kick. Finds Westrup, but she can't find the target. And Wilson will see if she's the goalkeeper in the second half. Certainly has played a part in the two goals conceded, but it wasn't with poor goalkeeping necessarily. Some loose touches and passes.
And once again, ball given away by Hofstra. Mensel couldn't control it tight enough. And Virginia on the attack. Ianella has given up a bit of space for the cross, but Madeline Anderson cuts it out. Settled by Sumter again. We'll look to attack Anderson. Get some space for a right foot, but Anderson closes it down. How about another corner kick? And we will go back and check on Mensel, who went down after the challenge against her and has stayed down. The substitute freshman out of Boulder, Colorado, and Boulder High School. And they will call for the Hofstra trainer. She crumpled to the field after the challenge that dispossessed her and is holding her lower left leg. It's a very hot day, so anytime someone goes down, you have to think about cramps, which cramps are usually the best case scenario in any injury circumstance, because you can just eat some mustard, get over them rather quickly. But as it stands, Virginia is up 2-0 with 11.09 to play. Take a quick break and be back with an update on Mensal after this on ACC Network Extra. Aliyah Mensel getting a nice applause as she heads off the field. Replaced by Rachel Cardinal as we get sent for the corner. Ayana Du, low driven ball. Coming back to get it, Sumter will go right back to Adu. Second one much better, has a lot of air under it. Played away by Porter. Just away from a charging Zoe Morris, but Morris had right to this ball, but has been called away comfortably enough by Ashlyn Sarepka. And Sarepka's put it right back into the mixer. Not a decide by Anderson, but she had a stern challenge from Jarrett. Shots coming in and shots being sent away. We have a foul called on Virginia, and I think it was Jarrett came in a bit too hard on one of the Hofstra defenders making the clearance. The strange back and forth play. The pride stand tall. Preserve a 2-0 deficit. Wilson finds her target. Flicked along by Fisher and sent back the other way by Morris. Skirtis plays this back for Wilson, who will have to go quickly. She does. Gets good air under it. Knocked away by Constant, who's there again. Constant charging forward. And away at the last by Gertis. Virginia is forced back to its defense. Adu, right to Gertis again. Gertis has defended well. Just lacked that bit of imagination in terms of playing the ball once she has it. Conceding it to Virginia, usually via clearance. A wall pass by Westrup off Porter, the forward. And Hofstra has won it back, Gertis, and that's much better. Now the pride building and a ball down the wing, a chance to run to it for Cardinal, but it's a bit too far. Well thought out by Hofstra and a good break forward that was started by Gertis. Virginia back to Laurel Ivory, who has not been called to answer for much so far. Not a single shot, let alone on target from the Hofstra pride. Jarrett with the layoff. Sargent. Sargent working against Ian Ella. She's found space on her right foot, drags it back. Ayana Du saved and held by Wilson. Did a fabulous job of not giving up a rebound. Kept her right hand around it. A classy play forward, though. Sargent to Adu, who ran right over the ball. 
Wanted to tuck it in the far post, but Wilson stood tall. There were a couple of Cavaliers waiting for a rebound to the opposite post. It very well could have been a goal if Wilson doesn't hang on to it. It stays just 2-0 Virginia. Sargent stabs it wide for Sarepka, who's cleverly gotten it to Jarrett. Jarrett weaving against Anderson, but Anderson a tough character to get by. She's poked it out. Time called, substitutions allowed. Two for Hofstra, one for Virginia. The pride going with Emily Rose and Sabrina Barton. For Virginia, it's Jasmine Wright. Little boy and Brian coming off for Hofstra, Zoe Morse for Virginia. Heat forcing real wholesale changes on both sides. Twirling run through the middle by Sumter, but she has found space. The ball in. Knocked away by Gertis, but not comfortably. What a challenge ahead by Sarepka. She has no one really to play it into. Ayana do the only target there, and it's flicked out for a corner. Sarepka has been very dangerous on the right side for Virginia showing the ability to dispossess her opponents and just burn them with speed. We will see Ayan Adu take this one with a bundle of who's at the top of the box. Adu, low driven ball, edge of the six, charging in, knotted back across by constant poke towards goal by Alyssa Gorzak. Did it take a deflection? No, and it will be a goal kick. A very threatening ball just out of reach of Wilson, who is contested by a Cavalier. Certainly the right idea. 15 shots, eight on target for Virginia, six saves out of Wilson. Cavaliers have also had four corners in this game, two very recently. Foul coming through the back from Sumter. And Hofstra will have a chance to catch its breath in these final six minutes by the 40th minute right now. And try and pull one back perhaps before halftime. This is a good opportunity to get the ball into the offensive third, but it comes in low. Knocked down by Sumter and settled by Sargent, but poked away. And Rose, who got the foot in initially, tries to settle it again. Sargent takes it back. And Virginia with Hofstra all the way forward, trying to apply some pressure. Westrup pushing ahead. She's looking for a ball that's just narrowly cut out by Stavisky, but didn't get rid of it for long. Ayana Du running at Gertis, who's taken Ayana Du down 26 yards from goal, and we will have a free kick. She got the ball, but she got a little too much of the player, according to the head referee, Fate. Nick Rod Fate will draw us a circle and a line as he walks the wall back. Three Cavaliers over this. Lorado Sergeant Sayana Du. Sergeant backs off now, and there's Westrip as well. Ayana Du's been taking the corners since she subbed in. Westrup offers the left-footed option. They go with a do. The bender bounces in front of Wilson, but she had a beat on it the whole way. It was a bit too soft for a do. She would have needed the help of a funny bounce to find the bank of the net. Did get it by the wall. Ianella back to Wilson. Let's see if, how long it takes for Virginia to bring some pressure. Wilson not messing around, dumps it ahead. It's knotted back towards the middle but corralled by Porter, who's running ball intercepted by Jasmine Wright. Picks her head up, looking for an option, but bodied off of it by Cardinal. Sent ahead by Rose, and it's too far over the head of Agostinello. Agostinello, not the target option that Bunicor is. 
And Sostra Desley has to change the way it plays just a little bit. Excellent ball up to Sargent. Virginia in business working against Ian Ellis. Sargent to her left foot. Pokes it across, waiting for it. Gorzak, chance to take it on to her right foot, shoots, and it's in! Alyssa Gorzak! 3-0 Virginia and Gorzak. You can't be more patient than that. She picked her spot, picked her time, and beat Wilson on the far post. A dagger for Hofstra, and it's 3-0 in the 42nd minute. Gorzak's second of the year. She came off the bench for this one, but did not waste her chance. Sargent picked that pass out, working off the right wing, and did it very well with the left foot. As Gorzak was in a very dangerous position where all she needs to do is take a quick step either direction, and she'll find an opening to put a shot on target. Went for placement over power, and it paid big dividends. Cardinal plays it up the line against Jasmine Wright. That's all she could do. 17 shots for Virginia and none for Hofstrup. Wright shovels it back to Westrup. Very disappointing first half for the Hofstrup Pride, a team that, according to the only mutual result for these two sides against Bucknell, certainly every bit capable of coming out of here with at least a draw, and obviously Virginia sixth in the country. Had to be the favorite, but Hofstra certainly you didn't figure was three goals worse in the first half alone. Two of those goals, tough ones. Great ball ahead to Sargent from Sumter, back across the middle looking for a late run. It finds it eventually, shot off the bar! Gorzak looking for a second in as many minutes. And if she'd made that run just a little bit earlier, she probably would have had it. Had an incredible burst of speed to get to that spot late and almost beat Wilson near post anyways with a rifle. Dangerous times for Hofstra. 44th minute Virginia with a comfortable 3-0 lead. And Hofstra at this rate would struggle to get three shots the rest of the match. We'll see what happens when the Pride are able to get most of the starting lineup back out there for the second half. Looks like the Pride are content to pass out the final minute of play. And of course, there is no added time because the, the clock can be stopped in collegiate women's soccer. So once that final minute expires, a horn will sound, and there we go. But Sergeant Virginia in general bringing the pressure. Jasmine Wright trying to head it down, caught the face of Cardinal. Sacrificing for her team, she did stymie any potential Virginia move as we're down to 30 seconds. Westerup. One more push forward for Virginia from the central defense. Just gets it by the outstretched foot of Fisher. The ball threw well too hard for Jarrett, who does have a goal today. And Wilson will make Jarrett come. Run a couple of seconds off, and we're inside the final 10. Virginia three, Hofstra nothing. The Cavaliers with a whopping 18 shots to Hofstra's none. It's been all Cavaliers in the first half on ACC Network Extra. We'll be back for the second 45 after this on ACC Network Extra. Welcome back to Clackner Stadium on ACC Network Extra. Virginia with a 3-0 lead over Hofstra. Here's the rundown of the first half. Leading the way in shots four from Alexa Spanstra, but she did not find any of Virginia's three goals. No, those went to Rebecca Jarrett, Alyssa Gorzak, and Taryn Torres, who cashed it in from the penalty spot. She only played 24 minutes. Virginia used an incredible number of subs in that first half, subbing out the entire starting lineup with the exception of the goalkeeper by the end of it. Ten substitutions. 
for this Cavaliers side. And the goalkeeper, as I say, that has been changed as well. Give you the lineups starting the second half. First for Hofstra, who's out on the field right now in the blue. It's Lucy Porter, Jordan Littleboy, Sabrina Bryan, Jen Wencore, Lucy Shepard, Megan Fisher, Madeline Anderson, Chelsea Stiegman, and Kelly Gerdes. They have kept Wilson in goal. Bunicor returns to the top of the formation. The largest goal scoring threat literally and practically for this Pride team. Virginia's lineup starting the second half. Brianna Westrup, Phoebe McLernan, Montana Sutton, Sydney Zandy, Santa, Sarah Maurer, Hannah Kerner, Courtney Peterson, Alexis Spanstra, Betsy Brandon, Megan McCool, and Taryn Torres. Early chance for Virginia. It's last off. Torres will be a goal kick for Wilson. Hofstra didn't lack for substitutes either. Rolling out eight new faces outside of the starting lineup. The Heat playing a role, but there has been a slight increase in the breeze to start this second 45. Should perhaps help some of the players manage. McCool's dispossessed Ian Ellett. Rolls it to her left foot, slipped ahead for Taryn Torres. Torres. Strong challenge and a clean one from Madeline Anderson, the Colonial Defensive Player of the Year last season. She's played like it today. Ball ahead for Bryan. Looked like she might have been offside, so she lays up. Westrup, so much composure on the ball from the Virginia defense. It's been the main difference between the two sides. Is Hofstra's two of the three goals the Pride have allowed have come from defensive mistakes knocking the ball around. Kelly Gerdes made a nice play to intercept that last ball and dispatched it well out of play. Maurer is the new goalkeeper for Virginia, the redshirt sophomore out of Roanoke. Stands 5-7. This is her first appearance of the season. It makes every Virginia player has now made an appearance. Wilson off her line, coordinated well with Madeline Anderson. McCool put on the pressure, though. Wilson stood tall. Forty-eighth minute of play winds through with Virginia the three-nothing lead. You wonder what Virginia's appetite will be to go forward in such a position. Maurer getting her first touch on back to Westrup handles the pressure from Bunicor. Hofstra's physical defending at the early part of the first half has returned in the early part of the second. Trying to body Virginia off as it moves through the middle and it's work. Porter flicks it wide, but it actually sets up Virginia pretty well, Taryn Torres. She could not quite corral it, had a streaking Hannah Kerner in front of her. Ian Ellett will throw it in. Tall for a left defensive player. Winds it back, lets one rip, but Westrup cuts in front of Bunicor. McCool. Back for Brandon, lovely pass back for McCool. As Virginia works it from one side to the other, laid back from Montana Sutton. Weighted ball to the outside is knotted aside by Lucy Shepard. Virginia does seem to have a bit of an appetite to go forward in this position. Great tackle by Porter. Takes it off of Betsy Brandon looking for Bunicor too long, Phoebe McLernan. Virginia's number 16 has it back and on to Sutton, who has a perfect ball out to Kerner, who snuck wide under the nose of Bryan, now cuts it back inside on Bryan. Kerner looking for options, had McCool in the middle, slips it to Torres. Torres back to her left foot, lofts it far post, headed in, lovely goal. Virginia 4-0.
Superb creativity from Taryn Torres. Knocks it across with a pitching wedge to get over the goalkeeper, Wilson. And all that was needed was the header on the back post. Cashed in by Spanstrup. Spanstra, the leader in shots taken in the first half, has a deserving goal. And if you didn't hear it over the loudspeaker, prompting an extra celebration from the Cavalier side, it's her first career goal, which you wouldn't necessarily believe the way she's played. Now sitting in the fifth game of the year. Ball across, handled by Maurer. Had Brian if Maurer wasn't quick off her line. One of the more promising forward plays we've seen from Hofstra all day. The big takeaway from Virginia going forward has been patience. The ability to wait for a moment when that moment comes, not panic and try and take it too quickly. Brandon taken down and crunched in a sandwich by Madeline Anderson and Brian. Brandon does appear to be okay. But in that last exchange, and in the goal before it as well, with Gorzak taking a touch, taking her time in a promising area, and then one step to her right, tuck it in the bottom corner. Torres that last time, taking the extra touch, not just hoofing it across, but bringing it back inside to survey her options further, and then coming up with a crafty, crafty ball. Westrup ahead for Sutton, Betsy Brandon. Had an avenue to run, but plays it wide for Kerner, who has space, separation on Brian, low driven ball. Zipped by Spanstra and ate up Sidney Zandi. And it's played clear, finally, for Hofstra by Lucy Shepard. There were a couple of good options on the end of that cross. None found, great foot in from Anderson again. Topples McCool in the process. The conference defensive player of the year in the Colonial last season where Hofstra was perfect in conference play. Poor exchange between Westrup and Kerner. Ianello. Deja vu for a couple of minutes ago. We're going to go long up the line. Lofts it for Porter, and then Will Kerner headed it off her own teammate. It's one you can have a laugh about when you're watching film the next day. Flicked along Fisher, trying to give herself a ball she can run onto, but Kerner has her beaten for pace. Gets to the ball on for McClernand, back to Kerner. The pressure undone. It's excellent movement by McClernand to drop off of Kerner while both of Hofstra's defensive players stay up. On the right back. Allows a complete release of pressure. How about this run? All the way through the middle. And then some for Peterson who decides to try her luck and it's blocked aside by Anderson. But electric stuff from Peterson. Testing everyone for Hofstra. Virginia with its fifth corner of the contest. Betsy Brandon will play it. Cavaliers electing not to have a player right on Wilson as they did last time. Brandon will take it short. Peterson's the short option. Rolls it around Torres. Zandi looking for a long straight ball into the box. Has multiple targets over the bar. Oh, it was Westrup all alone. And she couldn't keep it down. It was an excellent play that found three or four runners towards the back post, virtually unmarked. Couldn't have been much better service from Sidney Zandi. And Wilson thanking her lucky stars. The header was not on target. She would have really struggled to deal with it. 
Ball settled by Torres. Sandy has Little Boy on her right, plays it ahead. Some really sharp defending from Stiegman to stab it out of the air and keep it from getting through. Gertis. And then just rolled down the wing. A hopeful ball for Bunicor, who will pressure McLernan. McLernan, despite an early mistake where she did give the ball away to Porter, has been very sound with the ball. Westrup. Raising her arms on either side, looking for an option as Bunicor behind her realizes that. Ahead for Torres, a sharp inside cut. Virginia looking to switch the side. Sutton. Overlapped by McLernan. A running ball that has Virginia in business up 4-0. Looking for more. It is a cross. Misplayed by Anderson. And collected by Wilson to save her defender. It's the first foot wrong we've seen from Madeline Anderson in the entire match. She was uncontested in doing so. And alas, no issue. It's a nice hit. Forces a header out of Betsy Brandon. It's gone back forward. Curtis makes things tough for Torres, so Hofstra's able to dump the ball ahead. Soft pass from Bryan looking for Bunicor. Dumped back by Westrup. So Hofstra is starting to show some promise in possession. A through ball has picked out Bryan. Hauser pace. Try that on for size. Sabrina Bryan working against McLernan, who blocks it out for a corner. The ball from Little Boy broke it open. Sabrina Bryan got herself into a dangerous area, but couldn't get by McLernan. There's a chance off the set piece. It's a long run up the side from Monique Ionella. Twelve minutes into the second half, down four nothing. Ionella's ball flicked along. But no one was waiting for it at the back pole. Shepard did her job. And it's sent along. Wilson well off her line to collect any such ball. We'll send it back. Turned on by Taryn Torres and the danger thoroughly evaded. Wasn't a bad ball from Ianella. You could see the play. The flick on didn't go as Hofstra would have wanted. Virginia not finding as much space in these last few minutes to drive forward with the ball. We'll see what McLernan can do. She's one that likes it, goes the one-two, but doesn't get it back from Sutton, who leaves it for Westrup. And Westrup's deked her way by Bunicor, but her through ball from McCool is shuffled away by Madeline Anderson. Brandon. Has it back from McLernan under some pressure from Bunicor. Have to give Bunicor a lot of credit, a player that's always likely to score. Who has not seen a lot of the ball today, still defending passionately to try and help her team down 4 nothing. Zandi cuts by one, cuts by two. Zandi on her left foot pulls it back for Torres. Trying to get by Gertis, whose agility is making it hard, slips it through for Zandi, who's in business. Zandi blocked away by Anderson, who slams the door shut. Another Virginia corner on the way. Last one we saw was taken short. It was an elaborate play that got the ball to Zandi, 40 yards from goal. She floated it in dead straight and had Westrup on the doorstep. It'll be Betsy Brandon to take it with Peterson short again if wanted. In the 59th minute, floated in this time by Brandon, finds Montana Sutton up in the air on the edge of the six. Dangerous area. Anderson wins the header to keep it going, but not for long for Hofstra as it's one back by Zandi, dumped in by Kerner. McLernan all the way forward, whips it across just over target and Westrup. 
The big center defenders have stayed ahead. Shot by Sutton over the bar. Squared one up. Brought it to her right foot, but just lofted it a bit too much. You could see her leaning back. And we'll see what Wilson elects to do with this goal kick. Looks like she's waved her short options forward. A tough first half for Hofstra with three goals allowed, two mostly of their own making. Mistakes passing around the back. The third, immense quality from Sargent to Gorzak. And an early goal of equal quality to start this second half from Taryn Torres to Spanstra. Now Kerner's picked her way by one, looking from McCool, but Madeline Anderson's done very well to win it. McCool would have been offsides anyways. Angled ball to Bryan, excellent touch. She got by McLernan and drew the foul. That's some craft and guile from Sabrina Bryan, the sophomore from Pennsylvania, who has been the player to flash forward. 21 shots, 11 on target for Virginia, seven saved by Wilson. And it's four nothing, Cavaliers over Hofstra. The Pride looking for their first shot, have a second threatening set piece in the second half. Over at Lucy Porter. Looks off Ianella, now dumps it into the box, flicked away by Betsy Brandon. Peterson trying to chase it down to get a throw, but I believe we will have a corner kick. We will. Enough pressure from Sabrina Bryan to force it. Hofstra still looking for its first shot. We'll have a second corner to try and do so. Ianella will jog across the field to take this as an outswinger. So she is the out and out corner kick taker no matter which side it's on for this pride team. Raises the arm, Hofstra's bunched up around the penalty area, low driven ball, looking for the flick on again, and it's off the top of the crossbar. It almost found a way through. Lucy Shepard flashing on the front part of the six yard box. That would have been a spectacular header. Maurer would have had nothing to do about it. Almost perfect. You wonder if it was that was the intention or if they were going for the ball headed across because those can be dangerous. You try and start a bit of a scrum in front of goal so you can get on the end of one. McLernan has a lot of pace for a central defender and has used it very well in this match. Able to get to that ball, but Stiegman gets by two Cavaliers to keep possession for Hofstra as the Pride are battling forward. Porter, a wall pass back to Fisher now, rolls it through. Great quality going forward for Hofstra. Shepard in isolation against Peterson, pulls it back to the left foot, into the middle, Bunicor. Flick to the far side, Ianella, a long run for the defender. She's up into the attack. Back into the middle, Sabrina Bryan, touch by one, into the middle, dangerous ball, settles in front. It's a scrum for it, Fisher, and it's in. Moorer got a hand to it, but not enough. Underside of the bar and down, Fisher cashes it in, the substitute. And you felt there had to be something. There were so many options in the box for that ball from Sabrina Bryan. She did very well to get by Kerner. A couple of desperate challenges, the last from Sutton, but she couldn't quite get it clear, and it falls fortuitously to Fisher. You hit it hard, you hit it on target, and Marrer, with those reflexes, gets a paw to it, but it wasn't quite strong enough to get it over the bar. A wholesale wave of changes made by the Cavaliers after that goal with the starters headed to the bench. And a lot of the bench players that we saw in the first half returning for Virginia to provide the fresh legs for the last 27 minutes of this match. For Megan Fisher, her first goal of the season. And it was well taken.
Cavaliers looking a little under pressure now with the match 4-1. Hofstra scoring on its second shot of the match. The two coming in quick succession after being shut out for the vast majority. Fisher heads it right into the gut of Constant. There's looking for an option upfield. Can't find one she likes and lays it off for Ayana Du. And shuffled out of play in terms of starters that are still on the field for the Cavaliers. Spanstra and Peterson over on the left side. And that's it. Including Marer in goal. Sumter with a soft touch inside. Peterson searching for Jarrett. It's dealt with by Anderson. Stiegman. Crafty cut by Gorzak, but Bunicor was offside when the ball was played, so she could not pursue. Saraki looking for another long ball, given a runner ahead off the line. Wilson gets there, but it ended up being a little more nervy than initially thought. Rolls it out for Little Boy, stays composed under fire from Spanstra. Ianella. Little boy trying to drag one by the face of Jarrett. They're able to body her off, keep possession. The Cavaliers are bringing the pressure. Ian Ellis gone down, foul on Sumter. You know when these substitutes get on the field, there will be no question whether Virginia is chasing another goal aggressively. flying around in search of one. Spanstra in search of a second that you could say she definitely deserves on the right side of this attack. Ball ahead for Bunicor, dealt with by Siraki. Siraki, a defender that can match the strength and toughness of a player like Bunicor. Even though Bunicor does have Siraki covered in height, Virginia's number five, only five, six, but she can push a good number of players around. Bunicor gets the flick on header. It's stabbed away by Peterson, but the danger has not left. Ianella, Bunicor, Siraki, uh, just pokes it away. Bunicor keeps the pressure on and blocks aside Sarepka's clearance. Made a goal kick for Maurer. Cavaliers all too comfortable to take it short. The Hofstra not risking being overexposed. The second half scoreline is 1-1. Virginia scored early with Spanstra from Torres. The Pride have battled their way back. What a move, Gorzak. Gorzak on a run. She's kept it through two defenders, has targets in the middle. Jarrett brings it to her right foot, leaves it back. Great recovery defending. Spanstra pulls it to her left and spins it wide. The chance was there, a clean pass from Gorzak to Jarrett, and it probably would have come off. As you can see, Gorzak's explosiveness on the left wing. And the end, Spanstra with a bit of a half chance to cash in. That's the worst nightmare for the right side of the Hofstra defense, a player like Gorzak at full gallop. Constant has settled and played a running ball for Spanstra. Ianella overlapped. Sumter poked away by Anderson. Once again, timely in the challenge. It's a deep run from the midfielder, Sumter, to try and drag a couple of those Hofstra defenders. Just couldn't account for Anderson, who covers space so efficiently. Adu. Sizing this one up as Virginia a little closer to the six-yard box than it has been on previous corner attempts. Floated to the back corner of the box. And it's harmlessly out of play. Constant the player crashing in. 
And it's a water break at 2150 because of the heat here in Central Virginia this Sunday afternoon. It's Virginia 4, Hofstra 1. We'll be back on the other side of it on ACC Network Extra. Welcome back into to Clackner Stadium in Charlottesville. Home of the Hoos and one of the cathedrals of college soccer. Clackner Stadium seats a couple of thousand and that's just the stands on the near side. Can also fill up the hill on the opposite screen. But it's quite hot today, so only for the very brave hearted. And one I can see who's brought an umbrella, one or two. A word to the wise. Virginia leads 4-1 over Hofstra as Stavisky has come in for Stegman on the right side of Hofstra's defense. Stavisky a bit more pace to her than Stegman. Help her keep up with a player like Gorzak, especially in this heat. Stegman in the starting lineup has been out there a good bit. Full kick, one by Virginia. 1-2 has opened things up for Lorado Sargent. Deflected ball back across. Sumter running to it will make a move wide to the right. Flashes a step over, now back across the middle. Jarrett cuts it off, back to Sumter, looking back to the middle. Oh, the shot cross. Maybe Wilson got a touch, and maybe it just got through completely. It did. Goal kick. But Wilson was bravely out, constant bravely in, and neither made contact. That was good composure from Jarrett. She received the ball in a threatening area. Realized that she would struggle to get a ball on target. Went right back to Sumter, who certainly threatened with her second service. Ball ahead. Flicked along by Ian Ella, but once again, Virginia able to settle and control constant. Jarrett flicks it wide. And a poor layoff from Sumter. Given away to little boy who's frustrated with herself. Couldn't get her left foot around the ball to find Bunicorp. So Repka tosses it down the line. Jarrett can't pick her way by Little Boy, who's taking it back. Ianella down the line. It has stayed in for Bunicor, who ramps it off. Saraki, and she's found some space, Bunicor. A rare moment for her in this game with room to operate. Back inside to the goal scorer, Fisher, who made it 4 1. Porter, and they've gone complete reversal across the field, but Savisky cannot get herself to the ball. It's a long run up from right defense for Stavisky. And now she has to run it all the way back. Saraki. Excellent first touch from Ayana Dew to blitz by Porter. But Madeline Anderson's there again, and she's found her teammate in an acre of space. Running in on Peterson, the ball driven low across. Maurer edge of her area struggles to deal with it initially. But helped out by Ashlyn Sarepka, who bodies away Brian. In the 71st minute of play, Virginia up comfortably for one and showing why they are a team that's certainly in contention for a national title this season at number six in the country. And Hofstra being shown its weaknesses in terms of a defensive passing. Oh, it's an excellent ball through by Little Boy. It strengths as well, Hofstra. Brian in behind, cuts back. It was a bit too loose. And Saraki cleans it up. She jackknifed her way by Westrup, who went flying across the face of her. But Brian couldn't account well enough for the second defender, Saraki, who hustled back to cover. And Hofstra is showing a ton of heart. Got run around in that first half, but has been able to consistently produce threatening moves forward in this second half. And has survived as the heat has worn on led by players like the one just receiving that loose through ball, Madeline Anderson. Yeah. 
you learn a line from a victory and a book from a defeat. And Austria, well, it's going to be quite the book. It's something that will certainly help a team like Hofstra return to colonial play later this season where they are a dominant team but have those notes to take with them into perhaps postseason play where the Hofstra pride like to find themselves again this year. Those type of notes. Oh, great move by Peterson as she runs forward. But Madeline Anderson arrives on the spot and clears it off Peterson herself to produce a goal kick. Three changes coming, two for Virginia, one for Hofstra. Hofstra's reach to Rachel Cardinal. Well, Virginia's gone with Jasmine Wright and has reached for a new player as well, McKenna and Jody. Wilson decides to play this one short. If you weren't with us in the first half, it was two goals in the opening 30 minutes from Virginia, both from Hofstra mistakes, knocking it around the back. So definitely be important to pull off a couple of successful defensive passing sequences to build that confidence back. But sometimes it just happens. It's verification that we're all human. You can make mistakes. Condition of the human condition. And a tough time for Hofstra that has turned into really quite a fun time in the second half, trying to win the second half battle, because right now second half's tied at one goal apiece with 16 minutes left as we play through the 74th. Maurer decides to play it short for Siraki. Westrup. Working across the face of Bunicor. Now Siraki's gone. Long ball. Jarrett is there. Touch inside on Ian Ella. Back across in front. Beautiful goal. Lorado Sargent taps it home, and it's 5 1 Virginia. And oh, what a two touches from the young freshman, Rebecca Jarrett. That'll be a goal and an assist for her today. And Lorado Sargent will have the same as she assisted Gorzak's goal in the first half. Just the moment to turn the quality on. And a dejected Bunicor will leave the field for Hofstrup. No sense in running your star player ragged as we wear into the dog days of this match in the afternoon heat. The goal in the 75th minute for Sargent. Who had beaten her defender to the spot and Anderson had taken the carving touch by Ianella. Tough pass back for well, the third goalkeeper Virginia's brought in today, Kayla Moran. True freshman out of Greeley, Colorado, checking in after that goal as well to get some time as Maurer exits. And she deals with her first touch admirably, put under some pressure by Siraki. Augusta Nello, the player that came in for Bunicor, she'll be up top in the 19 in blue. 23 shots to two for Virginia. Ianella's throw comes right back to her. She'll shield off Jarrett to do it again. Into a crowd. Siraki knocks it aside. Little boy waits for it. Touches under her foot. And while well, she thought Ianella was a little more far forward than she was, slight miscommunication. The cost as Virginia makes another change. Anderson with a nod of acknowledgement from the Hofstra defense as Jarrett exits and Rosette enters. Rosette, her first appearance in this game today. 
And Jarrett, the freshman who's very quickly turning into a super freshman. With a goal and an assist to her name today, the assist that just happened right off the top shelf. It's a nice run forward, space opening up and then some for Sumter. Plays it off for Rosette. It was flagged for offsides. A bit overeager after entering for these last 15. Sumter has produced some excellent runs supporting the attack. Finding herself all the way up at the byline at times. What you want from your substitute players to cover a lot of the field, show the energy, or keep the energy level up. Flick on header by Cardinal. Chance for Agostinello, but it's shut down by Saraki. Agostinello's fresh leg showing through will be a nuisance for Saraki in these final 15 minutes. As both teams with player out, players out on the field trying to make a name for themselves to be in consideration for significant playing time as we get deeper into this women's college soccer season. It's right now in the non-conference, certainly more likely to make a lot of the substitutions, give players playing time, see what you have on offer, especially from the youngsters. Ayana due to Rosette. Looking to take her defender on, brings it to the left foot, shoots, and it wasn't too far off from Sam Rosette. Showing an attacking nature, flashing a smile to the stands. She had her defender beat that time, made an excellent move to create a yard of space. It's the type of shot you can practice to bending far corner, but it did not bend enough. Rosette, a redshirt sophomore, one of the more experienced players Virginia has on the field right now. She's out of the Bronx in New York. Stavisky's throw. Just tapped out of play, and she'll march 10 yards down the line, do it again. This time gets it into the gut of Porter Stavisky. Flip back into the middle. There was a chance on for a second, but Fisher couldn't find the touch. And now Sumter's given Rosette with the fresh legs, a running ball. How about Anderson? All oh, she got there, what defending. She's been out there the whole match and had the legs to beat Rosette to it. Another change coming as Zoe Morris re-enters the contest for Sumter, who played really the middle half of the match with Morris on either end of it. She'll get back on the field for the final 10 minutes. In the 80th minute right now, and of course there's no stoppage time, the clock stopped by the official when felt necessary. So those 10 minutes, all we have left to play. Touch inside by Sergeant Sumter is there, calls her off. Tackled away and then taken back by Ayana Du, who's going to have a swing. It's a lofty one. Kicked a field goal with it from 25 yards. Adu has been a very dangerous player in these opening couple of matches. She has two goals and an assist to her name. Has not mustered that kind of threat today. We have two shots, nothing to say for it. Another change from Hofstra. Emily Rose gets Jordan Littleboy, one of the starters. She's shown a lot of quality in the holding midfield area in terms of retaining possession at ball control. Virtually unbothered most of the time, little boy, by surrounding defenders. And Rose gave a good account of herself in the first half. We have a whistle as play has been called back to the initial collision between Siraki and Cardinal. I think Cardinal's been given the foul. Came in a bit too strong on Siraki as Siraki was knocking it back up the field. So a sharp eye from Nick Rod Fate. Who has marshaled the play back to the spot for Zoe Morris to take. As Saraki short if she wants. And that's where she goes. Bit of a loose touch from Saraki, but she catches up to it before Augustinello. Anderson. Fisher popped it up in the air and Constant steps in front of her. Now the give and go. Trying to pick out someone in the middle. Virginia had three runners headed towards it. Rosette has a shot to possess, but Emily Rose comes away instead. Now Cardinal 
trying to battle with her opposite number, number 12 for Virginia. And that's Constant who comes in with a studs up tackle. And she got none of the ball, but she called the dogs off at the last second to not really follow through on Cardinals. It's just a foul and nothing more. She knew she was late, that's for sure. Now it's 25 shots to two in favor of Virginia. As Hofstra had a real nice spell of about 10 minutes where they mustered a couple of shots, three promising set pieces, and eventually a goal. But after that goal, the chances have been fewer and far between, similar to the first half with Virginia finding space. Time called by Nick Rod Fate. In the middle of the park, he will give the substitutions. And Madeline Anderson will head to the bench after putting in a yeoman's afternoon. Hofstra will bring in her place. Siebel Lazny. And for Virginia, a substitution as well. Mia Hohenbeck, the redshirt junior from Vienna, Virginia. That is the first appearance for Hohen Beck while it's a return for Siebel Lazny. And she's the one to play the ball and get us restarted. Gertis. Stavisky back for Gertis, who's going to have a swing ahead. Strong play by Zaraki. Started maybe a counterattack for Virginia. Sargent, a searching ball. Ianella was there, but took a loose touch. Virginia still in business. Hohen back on to Rosette, who couldn't get her foot around it, stumbled. And it's a comfortable collection for Wilson. Eighty third minute of play. Hofstra searching for a second goal as a consolation prize, but Jasmine Wright beats Cardinal to the ball. We do have more changes set up, and it's Madeline Anderson. Well, she's not done. She's coming back. So is Sabrina Barton, who subbed in in the first half, bringing out Ianella and the number five, Lucy Shepard. They've been working very well on the right side in this second half, but it slowed down a bit lately. Sargent finds herself in a load of space, but forced to turn by Rose, Ayana Du. On for Sumter, and Sumter in a lot of space as well. Hofstra's been caught up a little bit. And Sumter, well, she's found Rosette, takes a nice first touch, tries to give it back to Sumter. Porter had a shot at it for a moment. Porter gassed, though. Sumter able to get inside of her, pulls it to the left foot. And guess who? Madeline Anderson with the foot in. Strong challenge in the middle by Constant. Got a little too much of Cardinal. Got a lot of the ball and a lot of the player. And I'll get a talking to from Nick Rod Fate because that is the second real strong challenge that Constant has put down in a matter of minutes. Wilson will come up to play the ball. See if she can create a running ball for Hofstra towards the goal. It's a low driven service, but Zoe Morse had it red. Back up for Hohen Beck. Cuts against the grain on Madeline Anderson, who commits the foul. Played quickly for Sumter. Trying to keep above the pace of Cardinal coming from behind. Cardinal puts her off, but Sumter's still charging. Cardinal again bodying as Anderson can't get it clear. Rosette with the challenge. And finally, it's Megan Fisher who drives it into the stands. Came off the railing right back into play. Switch the rules up to indoor, and we can just keep going. Saraki, who's marshalling her teammates, will take this toss from the corner. And she's setting up for a big windup. May try and get this one right into the heart of the box. Goes short on the byline. The flick on excellent from Sumter created a twinge of danger. Let's come back to Siraki. Rosette. Right into the heart of darkness again, but Hofstra has it clear. Siraki battling with Cardinal. Cardinal turns the odds in her favor. Has gone down. No foul. Rosette comes away with it. Rosette jackknifes by Anderson, but Anderson recovers excellent balance. She blocked it out for a throw. 
Balance just on the other side of the line, and Rosette is going to let Siraki come take it, or no, quick short dump for Siraki to cross. Floats it, no particular target for Virginia. Hohen Beck with a chance to touch it down at the 18. Ayana do back to Hohen Beck. And she just lofted it soft over the bar. It took a deflection. A touch off the Hofstra defender in front of Mia Hohen Beck gives Virginia a chance. Eighty seventh minute, the Cavaliers are up five one. And Ayana Du is trying to tee up a sixth. To the top of the eighteen, Jasmine Wright touches it down to no one in particular, and now a counter is on. Zoe Morse. She's committed to trying to cut off the run ahead of Barton, but Barton gets the touch down the line. She found her. It was a foot race, and Zoe Morris decided to go for the ball, even though she looked a bit farther away, and she did tie Barton up enough to prevent any quick break. And it was a long, successful recovery run anyhow from Ngotti, who had put herself back in position to defend anyways, should Barton have escaped. Long ball ahead for Hohen Beck. Stavisky is there. She keeps it short. Barton, who'd come all the way back, clears it down the line. There's a lot to take from this game for Hofstra. Obviously, you're never in the business of securing moral victories, but the pride will drop to 3-2. and two. Their two-game win streak halted after winning against Boston U and Fordham. And the road trip will continue, though, as they'll play Fairleigh Dickinson, Princeton, and Columbia all on the road. Of course, two of those in New Jersey and one's in New York, so not quite as long a road trip as the one down here to Charlottesville. The all-time series between the teams will go three wins for Virginia and no other results to speak of. Resent, and it's intercepted by Gertis, and she takes her time with it, picks out a nice ball to start the counter. Barton, rounded by the pace of Ayana Du. A lofted ball, Agostinello too far away from it. Zoe Morris tries to send it right back where it came from, but after a deflection, it's a mad scramble. Hohen Beck battling with Cardinal. Cardinal gets the best over. Then it's a home match against Stony Brook and the start of CAA play. A league that was dominated by Hofstra last year, winning all 11 league matches. The Pride obviously going to look to replicate that sort of success once conference play begins. For the Cavaliers, a successful preseason extended. We'll be playing Liberty on Thursday here at Klockner Stadium, then a road trip to Penn State and the beginning of ACC play with a trip to Blacksburg against the hated rivals Virginia Tech that on September 14th. So the Cavaliers well in with a chance to produce a perfect non-conference schedule and climb into the top five in the country. As you hear over the loudspeaker, we're into the final minute of play. The Cavaliers looking in all likelihood at a 5-1 win over a very good Hofstra Pride team here in Klockner on a very hot Sunday. The goals for Virginia coming from Spanstra, Torres, Alyssa Gorzak, Rebecca Jarrett, and Lorado Sargent, Sargent and Jarrett mustering an assist as well. Taryn Torres had the best of the bunch, though. Her assist was a cheeky chip ball to the back post that was just knotted in by Alexa Spanstrup and showed all the quality Virginia had today. 27 shots to two for the Cavaliers, 13 on target for Virginia, one for Hofstra, eight saves for Wilson. She gave a good account of herself in that pride goal as the countdown is finished. Cavaliers, five, Virginia, one. And that will do it here on ACC Network Extra. For the rest of the crew, I'm Zeeland Shannon. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you next time on ACC Network Extra. Again, Virginia 5, Hofstra 1 from Charlottesville.